to them for his love, for his mercy towards us that we don't deserve. You know, a lot of people who started the year 2023 have not made it all the way through. But we are some of the privileged few that God has blessed to be see, to see almost the end of this year and about to enter the year 2027. God has been good to us, hasn't he? He has blessed us during the year. He has sustained us. He has provided for us. And most of all, he has given us his son to save us, which we are celebrating today. Um, I want to um, thank my good friend, Meryl Antoine. You know, I have known Meryl for a while. <laughs> He's probably my, my oldest friend. He was in back in St. Lucia, he was my next door neighbor. We live so close that I could stay outside my window and shout Mary when he would come over. We would play cricket and soccer together and we remained friends over the years and he's one of my very dear friends. I'm happy that he's came over to spend the Sabbath with us and was blessed us with his gift of music. Um, I, I appreciate you, Meryl, and love you and I appreciate you as a friend. And also I have my lovely wife with me today. Amen. So I, I, I better preach today. Because <laughs> she's come here and we're blessed to have her with us. So I have a word from you, from the Lord for you. It's taken from Luke chapter 2, verses 8. I'm going to read all the way through to verse 20. And let's read some scripture this morning. It's Luke chapter 2. I'll be reading verses 8 through 20. I can't see without my glasses, so excuse me. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 20. I'm reading from the NKJV, the New King James Version. It says, Now... There were in the same country shepherds living out in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were greatly afraid. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes laying in a manger. And verse 20 said, And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which they were told by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Then the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told them. For the next few moments, we will focus on this passage of scripture under the sermonic title, Born to Die. Born to Die. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful. We're grateful that we serve such a loving and kind God as you. Such a merciful and compassionate God as you. A God who loved us so much that he gave his very life to save us in the person of his son. So as we celebrate the birth of your son today, Father, warm our hearts with your love and change us as a consequence of this. We ask these things in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 Born to die. Now, after de years, even decades, of impatiently waiting, uh, King Charles III was finally coronated as King of England in May, May 6 of this year, May 6, 2023, after his mother finally passed. Uh, he waited an excruciatingly long time. And I'm sure there were moments along the way where he even doubted whether he would ever be King of England. His mother, Queen Elizabeth II, reigned the longest of any monarch in, in, the British, in British history. She reigned for 70 years and 2,014 days. 
the longest of any other monarch in British history. He ascended to the throne in February 6, 1952, before I was even born. And she was queen until her death in September 8th of 2022. But finally, after decades of waiting, King Charles was finally coronated as King of England when he, when he is presently 73 years old. He finally became king at age 73. Now his royal, coron royal coronation and ascension ceremonies are occasions usually filled with the grandest pomp and circumstance. And King Charles' coronation was no exception. Approximately, they invited approximately 2,200 people to attend this event. And the guests were only the creme de la creme of celebrities and, and politicians, which included members of the royal family, representatives of the Church of England and other Christian denominations, prominent politicians from the UK, uh, Prime Minister Liz Truss attended, and all of her five predecessors as Prime Ministers attended. Um, foreign royalty, heads of state, heads of government, and British and foreign celebrities all attended. They all gathered in St. James Palace to pay their respects to the new King of England. It was a grand and auspicious affair. But here's the thing, over 2,000 years ago, another king was born in Bethlehem. And he was no ordinary king. He was no ordinary earthly king like King Charles II. He was, but he was the king of kings, the Bible says, and the lord of lords. Isaiah prophet about, prophet prophesied about him, his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, and of the increase of his government and peace there shall be no end, the Bible says. But when this king was born, there was no such pomp and circumstance. No members of the royal family came to pay their homage. No representatives of even the church came to honor his birth. No prime ministers or governors came to pay their tribute to him. No senior politicians came to pay their respect. No celebrities came to congratulate his parents. No religious dignitaries showed up to magnify his name. The only people who showed up to pay their respect to this new king were three unknown foreign visitors and some local shepherds who were tending their sheep nearby, the Bible records. And the greatest monarch that this world has ever known was born in obscurity next to some barn animals in a manger. Now when God was making the guest list to welcome his son into this earth, the welcoming party to celebrate the birth of his son, God did not include wealthy men of the time. He did not include the learned men of the time. Nor did he include the distinguished celebrities of the time, or the eminent politicians, or the acclaimed religious leaders of the time. But instead, God chose only to reveal the birth of his son to some unnamed, obscure, inconsequential, smelly shepherds who were taking care of the sheep in a field nearby. Now, have you ever wondered why? Why would God choose to only announce the birth of his son exclusively to this obscure, inconsequential, insignificant shepherds? Now the answer to this question has perplexed to theologians for centuries. And different theologians have come up with different answers. Some theologians believe that God chose to announce his birth only to those shepherds because they were humble. These theologians argue that the reason why God chose only those shepherds was because the religious leaders of the time were so proud that God decided to share the religious leaders by announcing it only to those humble shepherds. They contend that although religious leaders would have been the obvious choice to announce the coming of the Messiah, God chose those shepherds because the religious leaders of the time were too proud and arrogant. So God chose those humble shepherds to teach them a lesson by overlooking them 
and choosing humble shepherds instead. That God put the arrogant religious leaders to shame by choosing to reveal the birth of Christ only to humble shepherds. And that's why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1, 27 to 29, but God has chosen the foolish things of this world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of this world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of this world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things which are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. See, God doesn't always reveal himself to those we consider mighty, powerful, or important. God often reveals himself to those who we consider foolish, weak, and insignificant. And why that no flesh, the Bible says, may glory in his presence. In other words, to prevent us from stealing his glory. See, a lot of us sometimes think that if we are not involved in the program, God's program will fail. Some of us fool ourselves into believing that God needs us. But I have bad news for you today. God does not need any one of us. God does not need me. God does not need you. God does not need any one of us. See, sometimes we boycott God's program. We boycott offices in church and give up our church positions thinking that because we are not there, the church's progress will fail. True. But I have news for you. God's program will go forward and continue to flourish with or without you. That's right. And if our heads get too big and we start getting arrogant, God will accomplish his will through other humbler servants. Yeah. Servants that sometimes we believe are below us. Some of us that sometimes seem less talented than us. Some of them that sometimes seem less intelligent than us. But who are servants that are humble enough to let God use them. Because God has a way of accomplishing his will in a way that prevents us from stealing his glory, the Bible says. So God chose those humble shepherds to announce the birth of his son and overlook the religious leaders of the time in order to show that the glory all belongs to God and it does not go to us. But there's another reason why God chose the shepherds. See, God did not only chose the shepherds because they were humble, but God also chose those shepherds because they were despised. Mm -hmm. The famous evangelical um, evangelist Billy Graham states that God chooses to announce the arrival of his son through those shepherds because they were despised in order to show his great love encompasses everyone. Yes. Uh, Graham Paul said that shepherds were not only humble people, but they were also despised. You see, by the time of Christ, shepherds were looked down upon by most people in the community. See, shepherds had to sleep in the field with their sheep. They spent all of the time with their, with their sheep in the field because they had to protect them from beasts of prey that could come and attack them at any time of the night. And because they spent so much time in the field with the sheep, they started smelling like the sheep. <laughs> and because of that, most people looked down on them and considered themselves to be, considered the shepherds to be beneath them. And Billy Graham argues that God selected those despised shepherds to announce the arrival of his son to show that his love encompasses everyone. Amen. To show that Christ did not come to save only the folks that society may consider important, but his love extended to everyone, yeah. even the despised members of society. Yeah. See, because God's love encompasses everyone. Do you know that God loves everyone? Yeah. Whether you're rich or poor, God still loves you. Yeah. Whether you're good, bad, or between God still loves you. God love encompasses everyone because he loves everyone. His love extends to everyone. His grace extends to everyone. His compassion extends to everyone. 
His salvation extends to everyone. And God very well may have selected those shepherds to announce his arrival to show that his love extends to everyone. That his love extends to even the despised members of society. Yes. But I believe that the greatest reason why God chose to announce his arrivals to those shepherds exclusively was because Christ was born to die. Amen. Christ was born to die. Amen. See, theologians point out that shepherds in today's con that shepherds in today's context were quite likely actually priests. Mm. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. Theologians explain that the shepherds in this text today were quite likely actually priests. Let me explain to you why. They believe that there were priests because priests, they were actually fulfilling temple duties that only priests were permitted to fulfill. Mm. See, we know that they were fulfilling temple duties because of what is written in the Mishnah. Now the Mishnah is a group of writings recorded the oral tradition that governed the people of Israel at the time of Christ. And one of the regulations in the Mishnah expressly forbade the keeping of flocks anywhere throughout the land of Israel except in the wilderness. The only place where you could keep flocks according to the Mishnah at that time was in the wilderness. You couldn't keep it anywhere in the city. In other words, it was illegal for shepherds to keep their flocks at or near a city, as was described in this passage in Luke. But there was one exception. There was one exception to this rule. That was the flock that was kept for temple service. Now notice the shepherds discussed in today's text were not in the, were not in the wilderness, but they were in the fields of surrounding Bethlehem. So the sheep they were keeping must have been flock kept except ex, kept exclusively, excuse me, for temple services. And only priests could keep the sheep that was used exclusively for temple service. Mm, okay. So many theologians argue that the shepherds themselves must have been priests. Yeah. Now why would priests be required to do such menial tasks as tending to sheep? It is because these sheep they were tending were intended to be used in sacrifices at the Passover. And Moses has specified that no ordinary sheep could be used for sacrifices at the Passover. As a matter of fact, he said the sheep had to be one year old lambs and they had to be perfect and without any blemish or defects. And it was the priest's job to make sure that these sheep were kept on harm and in a perfect condition, and they were ready for the sacrifice to be used as sacrifice and, and passed over. So these priests played a significant role in the Jewish sacrificial system. And it was their job to prepare these sheep in their care for the Passover. And while they are quietly performing their duties, keeping watch over their flock by night, the Bible says, the Bible says an angel of the Lord stood before them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And the angel announced to these humble shepherds that the Messiah, the Savior, who is Christ the Lord, the real Passover lamb, was just born in the city of David. Amen. The angel announced that Christ, the promised Messiah, the real Passover lamb, Christ, the object of all their hopes, Christ, the wonderful counselor, Christ the mighty God, Christ the Prince of Peace, Christ the Rose of Sharon, Christ the Lily of the Valley, Christ the fairest among ten thousands, Christ the Messiah had just been born in Bethlehem. Mm. And that things would never be the same. Amen. And the Bible says in Luke 2, 13 through 17, and suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, on an earth, peace, goodwill towards men. See, the greatest reason why God chose to announce the arrival of his son exclusively to these shepherds was because Christ was born to die. Yes. See, Christ did not come to this earth on vacation, mm -hmm. but he came to this earth for a specific purpose with a specific mission in mind. Amen. 
And that mission was to be the Passover lamb. Yes. Christ was born to die. And his mission was even reflected in the announcement of his birth. He was born to die. See, the Passover lamb had a very special significance in the Hebrew Bible. See, the tenth plague that God God, um, that occurred the night before Israel left Egypt was the death of the firstborn. Now the firstborn has a special significance in Hebrew typology. The firstborn represents the whole. That's how by giving God a tenth of our income, we are symbolically giving him all of our income. And symbolically saying that he owns all of our income. Because in Hebrew typology, a tenth represents the whole. The firstborn represents the whole. So the, the death of the firstborn in Egypt represented the death of the whole community. Hmm. Now the plague was not only limited to Egyptians. The tenth plague also included Israel. It affected the entire community. But God told Moses to tell the people, both Egyptians and Israelites, that whoever sacrifices a Passover lamb and places the blood of the Passover lamb on their doorposts, that when the deaf angel came to slay the firstborn, which represented the entire community, that he would pass over the homes and spare the lives of the firstborn. Symbolizing that he would spare the death of the whole community. Now, do you know that the death, what the death of the firstborn represented? It represented the wages of sin. It represented the death that sinners suffer as a penalty for their sins. It represented the second death. It represented eternal separation from God, the life giver. It represented the final destruction of the wicked in the fires of hell. And do you know what the death of the fast over lamb represented? It represented the death of Christ on behalf of the sinner as payment for the penalties of the sin of the sinner. And the painting of the blood of the Passover lamb on the doorpost represented accepting and appropriating the blood of Christ as payment for the penalties of your sins. And it assures us that during the judgment, when the death angel comes to punish sinners, that he will pass over anyone who paints the blood of Christ, the Passover lamb, over the doorposts of their hearts. And do you know that the death of Christ on our behalf as a Passover lamb paid the penalty for every sin that you have committed in your life? Mm. That the death of the Passover lamb paid for the penalties of every sin that you had committed in the year 2023. But not only that, it also paid the penalty for every sin you have committed in every year preceded in your life from your birth until now. But not only that, it paid the penalties of every sin that you may commit in the year 2024. But not only It pays the penalties for all your sins from birth to death. Amen. Do you know that every sin that you have ever committed, that any sin you may presently be committing, and every sin you may commit in the future to your dying day has already been paid in Christ. Amen. That's why the Bible says in Hebrews 10, 14, for by that one offering, for by that one offering, he forever those who are being made holy. God has forgiven us and made us perfect in Christ by his one offering, by his one sacrifice. That is why the Bible says that when God looks at us, he sees us as perfect in Christ, as if we had never sinned, as if we're not presently sinning, and as if we will never sin in the future. God has forever made us perfect in Christ by his one sacrifice. And at the judgment, when the death angel come to execute the death sentence on sinners, 
the Bible says he will pass over us because we have been made perfect in Christ. He will pass over us. But here's the thing. This privilege is reserved only for those who have accepted God's free gift of salvation by painting the blood of Christ, the Passover lamb, over the doorposts of their hearts. It's reserved only for those who accept Christ as their personal savior by painting the blood of his sacrifice over the doorposts of their hearts. And God's invitation for you today is to accept Christ in your heart by painting the blood of the lamb, the Passover lamb, over the doorposts of your hearts. If you want to be part of this, if you want the death angel to pass over you at the time of judgment, the Bible says that you must paint the blood of the lamb over the heart of your hearts. Who wants to wash their robes and make them white in the blood of the lamb? Who wants to wash all the sins of the year 2023 in the blood of the lamb today? Who wants to live all the sins all the mistakes, all the missteps, all the shortcomings, all the guilt of the year 2023 in the past. And to enter the year 2024 with a blank state, as a new creature in Christ, with your garments washed and made white in the blood of the Lamb, to enter the year 2024 as a new creature. Paul says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. God's invitation to you is today is to enter the year 2024 as a new creature in Christ, with your garments washed white in the blood of the Lamb. And that is only possible because of the sacrifice that Christ has made on our behalf. Because of the fact that as the Passover lamb, he has suffered the penalties of sin that we deserve. And through his blood, through his sacrifice, we can now be washed clean of all of our sins, of all of our mistakes, of all of our impurities, of all of our unrighteousness, of all of our shortcomings. And now we have the opportunity to enter the year 2024 as new creatures in Christ, cleansed by his blood, ready for salvation, ready for his return, if we will accept his grace and mercy today. If that is you, I invite you to stand as we pray. Reconsecrating ourselves to Christ and taking the blood of his sacrifice and painting it over the portals of our hearts as a signification of accepting his grace, his mercy, and his sacrifice on our behalf, that we may enter the new year as new creatures in Christ, fully conforming to the will of the Father through the righteousness of his Son. Heavenly Father, we're grateful today, Father, that you are the Passover Lamb, you are the lamb which took away our sins. You are the lamb that bared the penalty that we deserve. You are the lamb that made eternal life to us possible. And we celebrate your birth and also celebrate the salvation that you have made, made available through us, through your son, Jesus Christ. But I help us to accept your gift of salvation while there is still chance and make our call in the election sure because of the sacrifice that you have done on our behalf. Save us today, Father. We have to sing in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. Amen. Amen.